We the people, these are some of the most recognizable words in American history, the opening to the preamble of the U.S. Constitution. The Constitution is the supreme law of the land, and to this day, it guides many of the decisions made at the federal and state levels. The framers who wrote the Constitution in 1787 were farsighted. They wanted to create a plan of government that would last. To accomplish this, they made sure the Constitution could be amended or changed if absolutely necessary. The amendment provision is in Article 5. An amendment must win two-thirds of the vote in both the House of Representatives and the Senate, and if it passes, it must then be ratified by three-fourths of the states. The process isn't easy, though. That's why only 27 amendments have been passed, including the abolishment of slavery, the repeal of prohibition, and the establishment of suffrage or voting rights for women, the 19th Amendment. While the Constitution never prohibited the vote for women, it also never guaranteed that right. So the fight for suffrage began on July 19, 1848, at the Seneca Falls Convention, organized by two pioneers of the women's movement, Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Lucretia Mott. The group drafted a list of injustices against women in American society, and at the end of the following day, this list of 18 grievances became known as the Declaration of Sentiments. At the top of the list, Quote, he has never permitted her to exercise her inalienable right to the elective franchise. Following the Seneca Falls Convention, Susan B. Anthony founded the National Woman's Suffrage Association in 1869. In a speech after being arrested for voting in the 1872 presidential election, Anthony said, quote, The preamble of the federal constitution says, We the people of the United States. It was we the people, not we the white male citizens, nor we the male citizens, but we the whole people who formed the union. The National Woman Suffrage Association began a more organized push to amend the Constitution, while another group, the American Woman Suffrage Association, began petitioning state by state. Later that year, Wyoming became the first state to allow women to vote. Anthony would go on to draft what would be the 19th Amendment presented to Congress for the first time in 1878. The turn of the 20th century brought on a more progressive and radical fight for suffrage. In 1913, Alice Paul, founder of the National Women's Party, led a march to the White House on the day of President Woodrow Wilson's inauguration. As the U.S. entered World War I in 1917, the picketing and protesting continued, with many suffragettes ending up in jail, beaten, and partaking in hunger strikes. With the news spreading of the abuse and more states adopting suffrage, President Wilson finally announced his support. After decades of marching, protesting, letter writing and other efforts, suffragettes finally won their case in 1919 when the 19th Amendment passed Congress. It was sent to the states for ratification and on August 18, 1920, Tennessee became the 36th state to ratify the amendment, making it law. Eight days later, the 19th Amendment was formally adopted into the U.S. Constitution, 72 years after the Declaration of Sentiments had been drafted at Seneca Falls. The amendment reads, The right of citizens of the United States to vote shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of sex. Drafting, proposing, and passing the 19th Amendment was a long and difficult process, and that's the way the framers intended it to be in order to prevent hasty changes to the supreme law of the land.